All right, all right, all right. It's almost that time of year. The time when I set the foundation for supreme and total dominance at my fantasy football draft. How can I be so confident? Because I used the ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers. Man, it updates all off season, so I never worry about using old busted information. Consistency charts, auction values, full projections. Oh baby, this thing's got it all. If you want to keep it 100 for your draft, head to ultimatedraftkit.com and get your copy today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's mock draft time. Oh, oh, oh mock a lock a ding dong. Let's get after it. Thursday, <laughs> July 2nd. <laughs> Let's get after it. Yeah, I'm jacked. We get our own team today, so so we get to see who constructs that roster that you, the listener, the Foot Clan, or the new listener, that, that you like the best. We are mock drafting. We do have separate teams. If you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers, you'll be able to see the draft board. You'll see the decisions being made as I construct my obviously soon-to-be-perfect roster. That's, you know, Lamar Jackson in the first. Let's Hey. Mahomes Mahomes, Mahomes in the second. Mahomes, you want that stack. In single quarterback leagues, you want (laughs) both. Hey, team, holes over there. I mean, Mahomes got hurt last year, so you would have had Lamar. I mean, that's just. I fully expect one of you to take Lamar Jackson. (laughs) Maybe. You never know. After after the last episode, when you were shaking your head profusely, Trying to ward off the I had to early block quarterback the, the demons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's going to be a fun mock draft episode today, and I'm sure the judge himself will get a poll up on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can vote for your favorite team. Uh, you can ridicule uh, any of us for any reason on the Twitter. That's one of Twitter's greatest attributes. Mm. It's a centrifuge of ridicule. What else is going on? We have the Ultimate Draft Kit. You heard our good friend at the top of the show, ultimatedraftkit.com. A reminder, a dollar from every UDK goes to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital once again this year. Great partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just updated the website. Oh, 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 yes, we did. Jason's uh, very excited. I'm very excited. We've been, I mean, this has been worked on for months and months. Jared Goff is very excited. Foot Clan, it is up, it is new, it is gorgeous. The Ultimate Draft Kit itself has been upgraded, including a couple new features. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's outstanding. Go take a look. Absolutely, yeah, and let us know. Give us your feedback on that, too. We've we've uh, spent a lot of time thinking about how to improve it, and uh, it was high time. It was high time for a new, yeah. refreshed, revamped website, desktop UDK experience. And now that the new revamp is live we are now changing our focus to utilizing our team for new features so we do want that feedback we have a roadmap that is awesome some things coming that are going to be incredible and we we, we want you to tell us about that but that's i'm, I'm excited <laughs> I, if you can't tell i'm hyped up how much of that energy drink have you already uh at least half the can <laughs> okay jason's ready to go <laughs> Uh, Mike, why don't you talk about what's going yes. on? Yeah, so after you check out the new funky fresh <laughs> fantasyfootballers.com revamp. I like that. Bookland, it's that time of year. Yes, Bookland Assemble. The podcast awards are taking their nominations. We're trying to make this process as, as simple as we can for you. Uh, we 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 give you the ship the we give you the show. Show I keep like choking on my words. We give you the show. We make it simple by giving you the show. I'm saying we give you the show, and then you show us the love. Oh, you were trying to do a little play on words. Yeah, and it wasn't coming out. I was no, that was zero for two. I felt like a record. Yeah, you want me to handle this? It did sound like a record. So, FootClanVote.com. Head over there. Make an account. 
nominate the fantasy footballers for the People's Choice and Sports. And while you're there, I'm sure you listen to Spitballers. Go ahead and nominate Spitballers for Best Comedy Podcast. Just, just an extra click. And there will be a box at some point in there that says, do you want to be asked to be a judge to give your vote when the voting time comes and say, heck yeah. The yeah, Foot fo Clan's ready, yeah. to, ready to act. So you can uh, vote for us if you want to support us, footclanvote.com. It is that time of year. Let's do some buy-sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Show, show, show. I have, I have no idea what happened. <laughs> All right, buy or sell Josh Jacobs at least 35 receptions in 2020. Mm. It'd be a big improvement on his 20 receptions from a season ago, although those came in 13 games. Yeah, 35 is not wild for a player that, as he came into the NFL, everyone expected to be more involved in the passing game than even the running game. This, The Josh Jacobs receiving game work feels like one of the wishes for the fantasy football genie. Like, you rub the lamp. This is one of the things that is constantly brought up. Mm -hmm. What would Josh Jacobs actually be if he became, you know, a viable pass-catching option? The like, answer is a top-five fantasy think, running back. I think that is the answer. It, it, it's I, easy for me. It he would be. Yes, he would be if he becomes, you know, a top pass catching running back. I don't think we're going to swing the pendulum all the way to, you know, if, if at this line, if he gets 35 receptions, he's just – involved right he's involved enough to be a little bit safer uh come game script i can tell you i have him with 41 receptions statted out for this season so i'm buying that he has at least 35 receptions this season he has the skill set we saw that in college he's an incredible receiver and you saw last year players like todd Gurley and joe mixon who are excellent pass catchers, just not used in that way. And I would expect for both of those guys, as well as Josh Jacobs, for that to be a single season uh, outlier. You, you know, sometimes these things happen in the way the game was schemed and the way certain game scripts fell and he was a rookie. And, and there's also been comments uh, about getting him more involved in the passing game. Uh, you had DeAndre Washington leave the team, which is helpful. So yeah, I, I definitely think Josh Jacobs is more involved. I'm buying at least 35 receptions in 2020. I'm at 40, which puts him at RB6. Wow. Uh, you know, you said he'd be a top five mm -hmm. guy if he was heavily involved. I've got him at RB6 with 40 receptions. Last year, he was the RB11 from weeks uh, one through 15, and that's with missing some time. So jumping from 11 to six, it feels comfortable, cozy. Yeah, and I have him projected painfully, painfully one under. <laughs> So I have him at... Is that the John Gruden confidence meter? It's Well, it's painful because I have to de decide if he's going to hit 35 receptions or not. And if my projection is 34, my margin for error <laughs> is very, very small. Uh, but I, I think I'll buy that he will get to 35. Ooh, I would... You got to update them rankings. <laughs> I won't. Delete. I won't be pressured. No. I will not be pressured into this. But come on. Come on, Gruden. We got to get Jacobs up to like 45. We got to get him up there. Over the past three seasons, only three running backs have finished as a top 10 fantasy running back with less than 35. So I think that might be why Judge Giamatti put the line right at 35 receptions. Only three have finished as top 10 running backs with less than 35 receptions. That's just part and parcel with being a top tier fantasy running back. You got to catch the football. Mm -hmm. So that was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com, use the code BALLERS, get a $10 credit. Let's go ahead and mock. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. All right, mano e mano e, e mano. mano. <laughs> uh, we are drafting 12-team league, snake draft, uh, half-point PPR. Pretty standard format, quarterback, two running back, two wide receivers, tight end flex. Uh, let's get it going. Jason has the seventh pick in the draft. I ended up with the ninth pick. Mike ended up with the 12th pick, lucky. And uh, first round, Christian McCaffrey goes 101, no surprise. 
Saquon Barkley at 102, Alvin Kamara at 103, Ezekiel Elliott, and Derrick Henry. Top five picks, all running backs. Michael Thomas goes with the sixth spot. And here we are, Jason, in the, here we are. you know, you put the, uh, what, the rubber meets the road on Dalvin Cook. Here you are with the sixth pick in, or the seventh pick in the draft. Dalvin Cook's still on the board. What are you thinking about? Yeah, so I, I'll be honest. You know, I've, I've done a couple mock drafts where I'm later in the first round, um, and I like some of the running backs that are falling there, the aforementioned Josh Jacobs, and I have Kenyon Drake technically the highest of that next tier of running backs. So according to my rankings, if I'm looking at running backs, I would be looking at one of those two guys. It's very difficult, though, knowing that they usually just don't go this high to pull the trigger. Now, if I go wide receiver, and of course, I'm not looking in the first round at Pat Mahomes or Lamar Jackson. So this is basically wide receiver running back. Devontae Adams is there. He is. Jonu Smith is there, too, if you're. What? What? How did he not go in those first six? That's ridiculous. <laughs> um. I'm gonna just going to see if he makes it to the next round, though, Andy. Yes, um, I'd, I'd wait. So, you know, I, I've got my pick of the litter outside of Michael Thomas at wide receiver. The one thing I will say this year, though, is, uh, you know, and Mike, you brought this up several weeks ago, proved to be true, which is later in the draft, you get to that fourth, fifth round, those wide receivers are so good. I want them on my team, and all the running backs there, I don't want. So I actually feel like this year more than uh, usual, I'm really sticking to some of these early running backs. And if that's the case, I am going to be drafting, because I'm at the seventh spot, Dalvin Cook. Okay. This is a mock right. draft. We're very early. I'm going to keep my eyes out for Alexander Madison later in the draft. Um, you know, I, I just think at the end of the day, my team will look better with the name Dalvin Cook on it. Yes. Dalvin it Cook would perform so better if so he helpful. plays, too. Yes. Honestly, he wouldn't get to pick seven if it wasn't for... Uh, what's going on. So buying a little bit of that. And if I can, uh, you know, secure the roster spot with Alexander Madison, then I'm good. Yeah, I, I'm a little surprised. That's uh, at 107. You had Josh Jacobs. You had Alvin Kamara. No. I believe Alvin oh, Kamara, Kamara was, went 103. Was I apologize. Okay. Uh, honestly, if it wasn't going to be him, it would be between Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake. I would take Kenyon Drake. It would probably be the highest you'd see him go in a draft, but I believe in him. Yeah, and I'm I'm staring down Josh Jacobs and Joe Mixon here. I figured uh, you would not go with Dalvin Cook. I thought he might get to me at 109. He didn't, and so I'm going to take the uh, the buy sell question, the running back mm. that I think will finish at uh, RB six according to my projections. Secure the running back in the first round before uh, Mike's picks here, and I will go with Josh Jacobs at 109. Right after him, maybe I had some fading dream that this man would flow into the second round. Joe Mixon. Goes right after Josh Jacobs. And then Tyreek Hill at 111. Mike, you've got a couple of picks back-to-back -back here. Yes, and um, I'm struggling a little bit because of uh, – the direction I go here is – I mean, that's setting the, the course for my entire draft because I have to wait, you know, 20,000 picks before I get to go again. Uh, I, on this turn, I could end up with two of my top 10 projected running backs, which sounds – uh, like an outstanding start. And who would that be if you went running back? Would so, that be Kenyon Drake? Was he one of them? Yeah, so Kenyon Drake and uh, Aaron Jones. Or, or actually, I'm sorry, between I have – right now I have Drake at 14. I actually have Eckler and Aaron Jones inside my top 10. Whew, so going between those two guys. Uh, then Julio Jones is there, and Julio Jones is just – he does what Julio Jones does, and that's finished fantastic. Or do I – take the pivot and get superstar tight end Travis Kelsey and see if I like the build of my team that way. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm being boring. I'm going to be boring. I'm going to take the running back. So I'm going to take Aaron Jones. Uh, and I have Eckler ranked significantly higher, at least balancing out the, the, the weight of a first round pick. So I'm going to take Eckler and Aaron Jones. All right, so we all went running backs in the first round. Mike comes back with Eckler. Jason's shaking his head a little bit. Because I took Eckler. No. Over Kenya Drake. No, that's not why I'm shaking my head. I'm, I'm shaking my head because I've got the dream. 
that Kenyon Drake can make it to me, but Andy is on the board. This oh. is a really oh, unique. This is a really unique spot where we are for your service going to say what's in our mind and our head, but at the same time, we're letting our opponents here know exactly who we want to come back to us. Yeah, I was kind of curious when Mike passed on Julio Jones if there was a chance Julio would make it back to 204 to me. I'm realizing I kind of like being at the ninth spot in the draft. It's hmm. feeling pretty good with Josh Jacobs in the first round. Mike went the running backs. Julio ended up going at, uh, with the second pick in the second round. And Nick Chubb at 203. So I would have had to stare down Nick Chubb and Kenyon Drake in this situation. Uh, unfortunately for Jason, Kenyon Drake is going to be my pick here. I am very, very <laughs> tilted now. I don't like this one uh, bit. Um, I I certainly wanted Drake to be there. If I could have started with Dalvin Cook and Kenya Drake, I would be, I would have left the show, uh, because I would be running down the street. You Just, log, you, you would have walked out. off. You're done. Yes. Two, two round draft. DeAndre Hopkins ended up going next, by the way. So you do not have him to choose from. Two Cardinals back to back. This here is, you are. This is where I will honestly start considering a Travis Kelsey, uh, someone that I think locks up that position. That being said, it better lock up that position. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, if you want that out of the way, you've got to take him pretty much in the second round uh, in most drafts. That being said, there is still one running back left that I project to have a phenomenal season coming up with how the roster stands right now, and that would be Miles Sanders. There's hmm. a whole other tier. You got the Fournette, the Gurley, the uh, you know, the the other options that I think are a step below. But Miles Sanders, if he Takes that step forward, he can be a top ten back this season. I have him almost ranked there, so I'm going to draft Miles Sanders, pair him with Dalvin Cook, so that I can focus on wide receivers in those middle rounds because uh, there's so many I like there. Well, and I I've went on a podcast last week, talked a lot about Miles Sanders. He's being drafted as the RB eight in best ball leagues right now. That was one of those things where, like, if you're projecting him, like he's yeah. being drafted pretty much to reach that next level on a consistent basis in 2020. So, boring or not, we all have two running backs after the first two rounds. After your Miles Sanders pick, oh, I'm not going to have to stare it down in the second round here because Mahomes, Godwin, uh, Juju, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Galladay, Kelsey. Kelsey at 212. You like that placement for Travis Kelsey? I'd, yeah, I'd be very happy to start McCaffrey-Kelsey. And then coming back with Odell Beckham at 301, George Kittle, Allen Robinson, Lamar Jackson, Mike Evans, and Todd Gurley. Hmm. Would you have been thinking about Gurley at all after going running back, running back, Jason? Because so I know I, you like Gurley I, this year. I do like Gurley, and I would be thinking about going running back, running back, running back to start a draft. I have I have done that many times this offseason. I'm 100% fine with that. However, while there are Leonard Fournette to Chris Carson's and Melvin Gordon, they're, 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 you know, T technically, my next highest running back is actually David Johnson, according to my rankings. They are, this is where we talk about tier-based drafting. They're a tier or two down. But my wide receiver six is still on the board. I know this will, uh, you know, be hurtful to Mike, but I believe in Amari Cooper. I think what we saw in the beginning of last year and his fantasy dominance was real before the injury. Bill, because it was. At and, the time, it was real. Yes, and but my point is the the post injury Amari Cooper that was hobbled out there on the field as a decoy. I don't believe that is the truth. I'm going to take the hundred million dollar man and put Amari Cooper with my Dalvin Cook and Miles Sanders. I'm liking my roster so far. Mark Andrews ends up going next in the third round. Didn't even drop to the fourth round in this half point uh, per reception mock. So I'm Jason's folding. got Cook, Sanders, and Cooper. It's funny. When you said your number six overall receiver was still on the board, I cringed a little bit because I thought you might steal your number six receiver. Robert Woods right then. You uh, have Robert Woods you do at not, six? No, I do not have, oh. I do not have Robert like, Woods that's hot. at that's... six. I have him at 10. Okay. I have him at 10. But he is my next highest ranked wide receiver on the board. Oh, really? I thought you had Cooper Cup very, very high. Uh, did you adjust your Cup rankings. or did you forget that he was there? Cooper Cup is still available in this draft is what yes, you're saying. Yes, he is. That is what I'm in saying. In which case, Cooper Cup is my pick. So we have, Andy and I have both started running back, running back, wide receiver. Yes. Yeah, I have Cup at six. I have Woods at uh, 10. Mm. So uh, I will go Cooper Cup. The team after me went Leonard Fournette. So they have Mixon, Chubb, and Fournette. 
Fournette sitting there in the third round in How every you- draft to either be a value or a disaster. Yeah, we're, we're temperature check on Leonard Fournette. It's the same right as now. it's been. Okay, it has the mine's at least gone up a little bit of like you're more encouraged. Like because that's it feels like every day that passes and not, and we don't hear anything from Jacksonville. Like okay, I'll take a I'll take another step towards Leonard Fournette. I don't know if I can ever get all in uh, and have to take him in the third round, but I'm just I'm just seeing where you guys are at, Jay. Where how are you feeling about? Fournette I, I, is look, Fournette repeating was, last year. Yeah, the Fournette's going to get the ball a ton, and uh, I'm fine having him on my fantasy rosters if he ends up getting the receiving work even near what he got last year. Uh, 75% of what he got last year, he's going to be a, a steal in this third round. I think the three of us have him projected to lose a significant amount of the passing work. When they lost TJ Yeldon, they didn't have anyone else, so they just gave it to Fournette. They go out and sign Chris Thompson. That's his specialty. He's worked with Jay Gruden before. So I think that's why Fournette, we're passing on him here, even though he's a high-volume player that could be a real value in the third. Well, the the trouble with players like Fournette is that when I'm looking, and I know you're like this too, Jay, when you look at those first couple rounds, two, three rounds, you're kind of, you, you want some semblance of security, some semblance of uh, knowing what you're getting. And there's at least that factor of, I don't know what I'm getting in Fournette because you know, do I trust last year's receiving totals or do I trust every other year of Leonard Fournette and, mm. you know, also dealt with injuries? Last year was a bit of an outlier in a good way for Leonard Fournette, but I don't know if any of us feel like he's a, you know, lock by any regards. So after after Fournette went Thielen and Mike's on the clock with a couple of picks, I'm fairly certain I know one of these two. Yes, you know the one that I am taking right now. I am taking DJ Moore, yes. who I... The breakout was real. I think it will sustain. It feels like he's teetering on the edge of my guy territory for you. Uh, look, I I wouldn't mind it. I feel like I kind of am the only the, the only member who's waving the flag. Oh lately. no, are uh, you in? I'm I'm totally in. If I if, where do if, you have him ranked? If Amari Cooper wasn't there, DJ Moore would have been my next pick. He's my oh, wide receiver. Oh, okay. He's my wide receiver. That 10. makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, no, I'm in on supported. I'm in on DJ Moore. I think that's a good pick. All right, and then. I don't think I will be leaving a fourth round without this fella. Uh, there's there's an extra incentive here because he's actually – there is a wide receiver who is one rank ahead of the player I'm going to take, and that, that player uh, is Robert Woods. But now I get to send Robert Woods back to Andy and see if he tilts – that he's like, I have to take two Rams oh, on this squad. I was wondering from I, the moment I drafted Cooper Cup whether I would be <laughs> live on the air trying to have to make a double Rams and decision. And I am intentionally making it happen. I love it because that means Woods could get to me. He could, but so darned if I do or darned if That's I don't right. now. That's you what you said. You can't set up. win no matter who you are. So you took two DJs. Double DJs. I did. I, I love it. I got DJ Shark. He is my. Pretty much my auto pick in the fourth round these days. Now, that's interesting because by taking DJ Chark, you're passing on Robert Woods, you're passing on A.J. Brown, and you're passing on Calvin Ridley, a player that all three of us look to yes. have a breakout season. But DJ Chark is just too enticing. D- DJ Chark broke out, I believe, in Gardner Minshew. Uh, the more I look into the metrics of what he was actually able to accomplish as a rookie thrust into action, and it's like DJ Chark broke out. Calvin Ridley... We are projecting him to break out, but he's still the number two on the team. DJ Chark is not. Uh, for me, usually that this uh, this turn would would be Robert Woods and DJ Chark, but DJ Moore was there. It's too entertaining the, to leave me with this situation. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. It's more because DJ Moore dropped, and I wasn't expecting him to be there. So, because we have the beauty of being live and doing this uh, for the benefit of our listenership, for the Foot Clan, I want to de- debate the merits mm. or the pros and cons of this situation. It, it is extremely rare. Now, I, I don't think any of us would have any hesitation with uh, Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley. Right. potentially being our two wide receivers. But there are some pitfalls, right? The mm-hmm. Atlanta Falcons have a terrible week. Matt Ryan is off. They face a difficult defense. Your wide receiver core could have issues. Same situation with Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. No Brandon Cooks there. These two guys should be on the field for the majority of snaps. Should be, yes. Should be. But what is what is your inclination? 
you know, I'm I, hesitant with other players that I like on the board. I have AJ Brown sitting there, who I talked about yesterday as somebody I loved in the fourth round. I have running backs I could choose from. I got a long wait till my next pick. I could go a Chris Carson. I could go a, a, a Lev Bell, David Johnson. I don't think I will. <laughs> I think I'm going to go wide receiver here. If you're going wide receiver, so there's there's a bunch of different you know theories on stacking players. A lot of times people love to stack quarterbacks with wide receivers. You get to double up on that passing touchdown, um, and people avoid stacking, say, a wide receiver with a running back. I disagree with that. I think stacking a wide receiver with a running back is fine because you get more consistency even though you get less big blow-up games. Now, with the wide receiver, wide there's receiver a problem, combo. There's wide receiver, wide receiver. That I don't know if would be as consistent as a wide receiver running back because if the passing game struggles in a game, it's going to affect both receiving options. I would probably not do that, but I am, you know, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I am super happy with Robert Woods or A.J. Brown, so I just want one of those guys to make it. Historically, what we've seen from the Rams, you should be perfectly fine. Like Cooper Cup and Robert Woods will both have high volume. They had high volume when there was a third wide receiver in the mix, and I'm not too concerned that that Josh Reynolds or Van Jefferson, like, are, they're going to come in and snatch up all this, this volume. It's Yeah, and Robert Woods was a top-five fantasy wide receiver over the back part of last year when it kind you know, the – the vaunted positive regression came back and he caught a couple touchdown right. passes was back on the field. Uh, he's who I have ranked higher. He's who I have more confidence as a, you know, you look at two situations, AJ Brown, 50 receptions last year, Robert Woods could push for a hundred receptions this year. Mm -hmm. Considering the, the format where I have him ranked, I'm going to double up. All right. Nice. Robert Woods is my pick and yeah. AJ Brown went next, which oh, means Jason no. gets Come neither on. of them. Now, will you be petitioning for the Rams to play with two footballs. Well, yeah, yeah. You so can't that, catch them both yeah, on the so same. Yeah, so Cup and Woods could catch a pass on the same play. I'm giving Cooper a, a phone call, and we'll see if he can throw a couple. All right. All right. Well, I tilt on this pick. Yeah, why don't you uh, pause for just a second, because we got to thank today's sponsor. Uh, you will not stop working until you reach your goals in this draft or otherwise, gentlemen, mm -hmm. and neither will WGU. That's why they've created an online university for people whose ambition never rests. WGU's innovative competency-based learning model, we should apply that here, uh, was designed specifically to fit in the lives of busy adults. WGU is nonprofit, offering online bachelor's and master's degrees in business, IT, education, and nursing. You can move through the material you already know and spend time learning what you don't, which means the faster you demonstrate what you know, the faster you finish. That's a nice educational model. It's also about half the cost of most other online universities, so you can graduate with far less debt, which is a huge problem in the education system today, or none at all. Get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers. That's wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers. Definitely check that out. I, While well, I was sharing that wonderful information from one of our sponsors, Jason was grimacing. Mm. He may be dealing this with some constipation on top of whatever else is going oh, on in his head. It's not feeling good in the tummy when I'm, a, when I'm looking at this board that looked so great two picks ago. I just, Robert Woods or A.J. Brown, I will take either one of them. So I draft A.J. Brown. Did you forget where you were in the draft? No, no, I, I know exactly where I was, but I'm disappointed because they represented a higher tier. Now it's pretty much even. If you if I look, you know, when I'm not really loving either option, I'll glance at quarterback and tight end. Dak Prescott's out there. He's mm -hmm. great. I'm not taking him this early. Uh, no tight end. You know, Darren Waller. Uh, look, we love the Walrus. You know, goo 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 goo, but yes. I'm not taking him this early. Mm. Um, so I, I am looking at a wide receiver or a running back. The wide receivers here, Cortland Sutton, Keenan Allen, Tyler Lockett. I, they don't inspire me. I was going to say, do they make you excited? Nope. So I am picking between David Johnson and Melvin Gordon here. Um, and while it's not my absolute... What year is it? Yeah, exactly. I, w I wish this was a couple years ago. Um, when I compare these two players, they're 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 back-to-back -back in my rankings. They're almost identical across the board. However, one of these players, I believe, was brought in um, to be given the workload, not split it as much 
I think that the departure of DeAndre Hopkins is going to require more throwing to the running back position, and I am going to draft David Johnson. Ooh, David Johnson. Yeah. Houston. Ooh. Houston. <laughs> uh, David Johnson will be uh, my third running back on this roster. So Dalvin Cook, Miles Sanders, Amari Cooper, and now David Johnson is uh, are the four guys on Jason's team. And you did kind of uh, jump in on David Johnson before maybe another tier was extinguished. Lev Bell went next, then Melvin Gordon. Oh, I, I had Gordon and David Johnson back-to-back in my rankings. Jonathan Taylor ends up going in the fourth round. And then we say uh, maybe this will make you feel less comfortable, Jason, but you see a lot of wide receivers go off the board. Keenan Allen, Cortland Sutton, Tyler Boyd, Tyler Lockett, then Chris Oof. Carson, then A.J. Green, Stephon Diggs, Devontae Parker, and T.Y. Hilton. Oh, oh. You're oh, back on the clock, him. middle of the fifth round. I imagine you, you'd like to pick up a wide receiver, but what does the draft want you to do? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, when I'm looking at my team, I think wide receiver is the right spot here. Um, I, I don't see any running back that forces my hand. What about um, Dak Prescott? Do you think he's enough upside here in the middle of the fifth round? No. I, if I were to take I quarterback tried or tight end, I would take Darren Waller over Dak Prescott because later in the draft, there's some tight ends I love, but uh, they're no sure thing. Later in the draft, there are 10 quarterbacks that are pretty sure things of being successful that I'm, I'm happy to walk away with here. So I am going wide receiver, and I'm going to say this out loud, even though it is not to my benefit. I'm going to play the ADP game here. What I want to have happen here is I want Terry McLaurin and I want Marquise Brown. I want those two second-year wide receivers. And if I play the ADP game, i got to take Scary Terry first. So I'm going to draft Terry McLaurin and hope that you two gentlemen don't grab my my Hollywood Brown um, and hope I can put him on my roster mm -hmm. next because if I can get both those guys, I'll be thrilled. That's my strategy here. Um, so Terry McLaurin will be added to Amari Cooper on I the like roster. It. All right. Well, one of the things I was hoping for, I'm on the clock here, ninth pick of the fifth round. When I drafted Robert Woods, went back-to-back -back wide receivers, I saw kind of a, a, a grouping of running backs, David Johnson, Lev Bell, Melvin Gordon, Chris Carson, and two other names that I was hoping one of these guys would come back to me. The two other names being David Montgomery and Raheem Mostert, both players that I believe will have uh, a good deal of work this year. Uh, I like the upside, the breakout potential for somebody like Raheem Moster, but I actually have David Montgomery as uninspiring as he was last year, ranked a little bit higher. So much volume. Very ex hey, He'll have so it again. So much volume, man. He's a good pass catcher, and uh, look, he's the pick here. Uh, I'm getting a bona fide starter. Do I know who the starting quarterback is? No. Oh, no! Oh, you wanted James Conner, didn't I you? I did. But yeah. David, let's uh, make sure... We go through these. David Montgomery was my pick. Dak went next, and then James Conner before Mike's pick at five. Dang it, man! I thought for sure I would get Conner. So what are you yeah. what are you thinking about here, Mike? Because you have two more picks, but then you don't pick until the seventh round. Assembling your roster, you got two running backs: Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler. Yes. You've got DJ Moore and DJ Chark. I don't think you can take another DJ here. That would be ooh. Can we find one? Deontay Johnson. Uh, no, nope, doesn't count. That one doesn't count? Nope. Okay. Well, what are you thinking? So right now, DK Metcalf is still on the board. It's close he, to DJ. Yes, it, it that's true. So <laughs> my motif will stay alive at least a little bit before it vanishes into dust. Uh, I'm actually being a little bit tempted here uh, by a curveball that I would not normally do. Hmm. Is it uh, um, is it tight end? No, it is not a tight end. It is no, like I said, it's not something I usually do. But off brand, we're talking we're, Kyler. We're, we're going off brand. I'm going to take a player that I and I want to see what well, I want to see what happens. I'm going to take my number three quarterback. I'm going to draft Kyler Murray. Who talk about the, the upside of Kyler Murray now is so insanely high. Did you know that Kyler Murray had a touchdown rate of 3.7%? <gasps> no, I did not know that. Now, for the uninitiated, that is bad. That is That's very low. The The average for quarterbacks with 300-plus attempts is 4.7, so an entire percentage point. And yeah, what did they, they what, do? But they added DeAndre Hopkins. They added 
the best wide receiver in football. So I'm I'm going to take a shot on it. I'm going for it. So Kyler Murray is on my team. I it's hope, very interesting. I hope I don't regret could have, it. <laughs> could have gone Mark Ingram. Could have gone Raheem Mostert. Now you have well, another, I still have still another pick. You have another pick. You have DK Metcalf, as you said. You could double up on quarterbacks as we're, you know. Oh, yeah. You can get sure. real wild, Mike. <laughs> Look, I'm not going that crazy. I do love that you're the first person, after shaking your head at us on the last show, right. with Lamar Jackson in the third round, potentially. Hey, well, you were talking about second round. Pick 22, you're right. <laughs> but you're the first one with a quarterback in this game. Yep. Well, look, this is, Glad, this is for you. This is for you. Let's see what happens. Okay. In some ways, it's for me, too, because I have a pick coming up, and now two quarterbacks went off the board. Yeah, and I feel like our, the running backs are <laughs> they are getting dreadful, but there still is uh, the, the the old reliable Mark Ingram. I got. I can't pass up on this I, value. I I knew you were going to take Mark Ingram when he's sitting there in the sixth round, or is this now technically the the seventh? I don't know. Uh, that that is too good a value. He is always year after year after year he beats his ADP. Guess what he's going to do this year? He's going to beat, beat his ADP. Beat his ADP, and he's not one of your top two running backs. You're not right. relying on him to be the stud he's just great depth at this point in the draft I, we, we've talked about him recently i like the pick a lot all right now i'm in a very curious position mike by the way your team uh aaron jones austin eckler mark ingram at running back dj moore dj chark at wide receiver and kyler murray at quarterback i've got josh jacobs Kenyon drake and david montgomery i feel very comfortable at running back cooper cup and robert woods I've got two Rams, two top tier, top twelve wide receivers from my projections. I am, I am wondering whether to consider Darren Waller here a little bit. Mm. It's the middle of the sixth round. It could represent a differentiator at the tight end position for my team if I get what we got from Darren Waller last year. Could also mm. take a player like mm. Hollywood Brown. Might I interest you in <laughs> another player such as Michael such Gallup? Such as is Michael Gallup good. is great. Uh, Debo Samuel on the board, plummeting down draft rankings this due to too, the injury. This is still too soon for Debo. For it me. is, and then at, at running back, you know, I at this point, is there a big difference on your draft board between taking a shot on a DeAndre Swift or taking a shot? on uh, a Ronald Jones or taking a shot on a Sony Michel. Let's, say let, let's talk Sony Michel real quick because we didn't really get into Sony. What if Cam Newton is the starting quarterback for the Patriots? Yes, Cam Newton will vulture touchdowns, but historically we have seen time and time again running backs who have very mobile quarterbacks, quarterbacks that run, the person that benefits the most is the running back. They get those easy open lanes, and specifically, Sony Cam, Mich Sony Michelle needs easy open lanes these days. Cam Newton's running back right. has usually been very good for fantasy over uh, you know his career. Let's see what Al Borland thinks about that option. James White. <laughs> <laughs> what would you feel physical pain, Al, if you were forced to wear a Sony jersey for like a month in the office? Definitely. Hmm. We'll have to figure out what those bet parameters will become. Uh, Darren Waller here, is, I'd rather wait and see what happens in the next round in terms of Waller and Jared Cook, I think. I'll tell you what's very funny, uh, as it just dawned on me. The If I were you, I would probably be drafting Cam Akers. And, but then I was like, oh, crap, I don't know if he can do that. <laughs> Three Rams. Yeah. Uh, the two names that I'm looking at here would be Cam Akers and, and Hollywood Brown. Of, of, oh, you did say Hollywood's name. Yeah, it will be Marquise Hollywood Brown with this pick. No, High upside seriously? pick. You jerk. DeAndre Swift goes next. Well, you did tell him what you were going to do. I know. That's <laughs> not fair. This format is stupid. I quit. Well, I mean, I appreciate your transparency, but he, he was the right Mix and match for my team. I have three wide receivers, three running backs. You're back on the clock, Jason. DeAndre Swift did go next. So if you were pining for DeAndre Swift, he was not available to you. I was not. Here <laughs> is... Uh, Carry like, On is still there. Well, it's... Hold on, hold on. Carry On Hollywood, sir. Just pouring dirt on him. 
Well, How it, could it, you it ask is, me to cry I mean, no more? It's a competitive draft, Mike. Uh, this is why we do right. it this so way. I, I just said a second ago it was between Cam Akers and, and, and Hollywood Brown. Um, the reason that I like Cam Akers over some of the other running backs, over Sony Michelle, over the just-picked DeAndre Swift, is because he has the opportunity to go into a great offense uh, for a great head coach in a vacant Todd Gurley role, win the job, and be very fantasy relevant. So I I, I do like Cam. You more also than have a variable in Dalvin Cook that you you know you could be missing a running back yeah. potentially. I could, and that is yeah, when are you looking to insure, Jason? Uh, <laughs> you're not taking <laughs> Alexander Madison away from me, Mike. You stop it. Um, I'm not looking to insure yet. I I wouldn't do it before the seventh. I'm gonna play the game hope he gets to the eighth uh, talking about alexander madison uh, that being said um i think there is another player here that i prefer over taking the shot on cam Akers. um i just brought him up to andy a second ago i think michael gallup he's he's a player that if uh, cd lamb wasn't drafted michael gallup would be talked about with calvin ridley um and gallup is coming into a team that lost Randall Cobb's 83 targets, lost Jason Witten's 83 targets. I think Michael Gallup is a great player. I'm happy to have him at this point instead of Hollywood Brown. They're they're near each other in my rankings. So I'm going to take a safer approach. Cam Akers, to me, is the higher upside, uh, but the safer approach would be Gallup. It's interesting, though, because now I am not alone in two-thirds of my wide receiver core playing on the same team. Mm. You have Amari Cooper. Then you went Terry McClellan. I didn't, didn't even think of that. So when you're doing a live <laughs> show while your while face, doing the mock draft, your face talking through these yes. picks, sometimes you miss a yes. thing or two. He's safe because you, uh, you know, you've always got a Dallas wide receiver to start. That's yeah, exactly. I wanted. You to, also have the the Dallas number one wide receiver now. Also, good news, um, so a ton of picks went <laughs> yeah. because I'm back on the clock, and only one running back went, so that's great. Uh, yeah, you can still draft Cam Akers. Let me run through no. real mm -mm. quick. Oh, he went. All he right. was the one. Jarvis Landry. The, only, the one. only one was the one I wanted. Jarvis Landry, Darren Waller, Debo Samuel, Deshaun Watson, Julian Edelman, Russell Wilson finishing the sixth round. In the seventh round, Cam Akers kicks it off. Josh Allen, Brandon Cooks, Will Fuller, Matt Ryan, and Marvin Jones. So, Jason, you are back on the clock. I want you to know uh, Carry On still available. C.D. Lamb should be in your consideration here. <laughs> Just really get that wide receiving core uh, for the if Cowboys. you even think about drafting Blake Jarwin, though, I'm going to throw hands. Mm. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, oh, these are fun. <laughs> Carson Wentz and Drew Brees are still there. Drew Brees very highly ranked for me. Uh, to so I you know this is where I might start looking for a quarterback, but there still are so many Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, Big Ben, uh, eight quarterbacks off the board so far. Newton, Jared Goff. There's just too many quarterbacks that I would be happy to leave this draft with to pull the trigger on one of them. Um, it does look like I could use some running back depth here. Um, and when I look at the wide receivers, there's Deontay Johnson. A lot of people like. He's not been my favorite. So I'm going to go to running back, um, and I'm going to take a guy. Why don't you talk about some of the options you're staring so at? So you've got Kareem Hunt, Darius Geis, Sony Michelle. Um, th those would be the main three guys. If my name was Mike or Andy, Ronald Jones would mm -hmm. be in that list. And actually, uh, I should say this for the knowledge right, well, of the book. Is it the public? This is the public announcement. I have gone back. I watched about half of his games, every snap of Ronald Jones. Here is my takeaway. He has some special talent. He is very fast. He has breakaway speed, breakaway ability. I saw it over and over and over. If you don't get your hands on him, he's going to be 30 yards down the field, and I love that. I, I bumped his uh, you know total yardage up a little bit. If you get hands on him, he's not that hard to tackle. He's not breaking a bunch of tackles to me or, or having any kind of power, and he's still not utilizing the passing game. So I did bump him up a little bit, but I'm not excited about him. I'm actually going to take Kareem Hunt, and here's why. Boo. Kareem Hunt uh, was – a startable. Almost. I would have taken him 100%. He, he was startable pretty much Alexander every week Nash. that he was available um, last year once he got back off of the suspension. He is awesome. Like that, That's not up for debate. Kareem Hunt as a running back is great. It's just what's the opportunity. They want to run the ball. They've upgraded their offensive line. And in the situation where Chubb, who has dealt with injuries of his own, were to go down, Kareem Hunt would be All right. 
He would be awesome. And the the chatter that Kareem Hunt could earn the job of the wide receiver three is still a realistic option, that he might be on the field just as much uh, as Nick Chubb. You could have an Austin Eckler type of exactly. season from Kareem Hunt. I like the pick there, Jay, unfortunately. I think that was the right pick for you. Um, unless you took another Cowboy wide receiver, that would have been the better pick. But <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, yeah, I'm sitting here in the seventh round with a couple of you know interesting running back options, in my opinion. Um, Ronald Jones has an opportunity. Sony Michelle should be the starter. And if Cam Newton's the guy, then Sony Michelle's my guy right here. Uh, getting Sony Michelle starting running back for the Patriots in the seventh round. Hmm. All, warts and all, I will give him a shot. And uh, Deontay Johnson went next at 7'10. Carson Wentz at 7'11. And Mike has uh, two picks here one is Madison, and one is somebody else. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, uh, man. So this, th this is the first time I've looked at the board and thought, Bleh, I don't, I don't like what I'm looking at. It, the decision is is not easy. The players who I would be working through, uh, uh James White, I guess, is a little bit interesting. But Jordan Howard, Ronald Jones, do I double down on Baltimore and grab the rookie J.K. Dobbins? maybe some insurance, maybe they're splitting time, and then I have both of them of a very high-powered rushing attack. The wide receivers uh, leave a lot to be desired. We're kind of into that point where you just, do you take a safe player like Jamison Crowder uh, to, to mix with the Or do you go rook, DJ rookie, uh, Jerry Judy, Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, three rookies on the board, Henry Ruggs on the board? I'm just not. Sure, Alshon Jeffrey and your roster. I mean, that just is this a cozy yeah, that's, that's not match happening. made in heaven? That, no. is, that is definitely not happening. All right. So I'm going to grab first. Let's, oh, where, I lost his name. All right. I'm going to take, I'm going to take Ronald Jones. I think uh, it's a fine pick. It's, it, it's never going to feel excellent. To take Ronald Jones. Not but, around Jason. No, I, 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 I get that. I just spoke but, the nicest words I've ever said about that man. But. As of right now, he's the starting running back for the Tom Brady-led Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They, I think, are going to score a now, lot I'm, of points. I'm a little bit surprised that you aren't, you know, ensuring your wide receiver core quite yet. Now you have another pick, but you only have two wideouts through right. set, your first seven picks. And uh, while DJ Chark had the breakout season, DJ Moore obviously did as well. Some variables there. You know, Gardner's going to be uh, the starter. Jacksonville might not be a great team. And DJ Moore is getting a brand new quarterback. Are you looking at wide receiver with this next pick? I am looking at wide receiver, and I'm going <clears throat> I'm going down the ADP ranks because we're, we're at the point of the, of, the, of the game where – Get the guy you is want. This a go is this a golden pick? This Mike? is a golden pick, my friend. I highlighted him. I like Golden Tate. He is interesting to me as a wide receiver three, especially with – Two dominant, in my opinion, dominant wide receivers. Golden Tate doesn't have to do a whole lot for me because uh, the other guys will pick up the slack. So I'm pretty pretty happy there with Golden Tate. All right. I am on the clock with the fourth pick of the eighth round, and uh, I took a little gamble there drafting Sony Michelle, hoping that my number five overall quarterback would drop to me here in the eighth round. We're talking about Drew Brees. Drew Brees is going to be my pick here. I've got a long wait until the next one. And, you know, I think he ends up being the 11th quarterback off the board in this draft, but my number five overall. So quite the steal. Yeah, no, I, I, I like that. There's been a lot of quarterbacks that have gone off in the last few picks and none of them were Drew Brees as he should have been picked. So here's where I start looking at Alexander Madison, but you've always got to play the game of fantasy football. Know your league, right? And when I look at my league in this moment, I see that you two gentlemen don't pick again before my next pick, and I think that I I'm going to play the computer. I will be here. so happy if he goes <laughs> so after. I feel like you're doing the Prince's Bride monologue. So, <laughs> I uh, I don't know it, but I what I don't know. Are you the talking monologue. about the, I know, the when, he, when he he's watches the cups. You, yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, you know All the right. scene, right? I'm, uh, dude. It's now been you, 15 years since I've watched. If you move that, then I move this. It's been a long. You time. You need to watch it. That is a. Oof. All right, I'll watch that with my princess. 
tonight. Your, your whole All family right. will love it. Um, I'm going to take Jerry Judy. Uh, I think that he represents one of the highest upside wide receivers here. I need someone that isn't on the Cowboys to catch the ball. <laughs> and so for those reasons, uh, oh. you know, I, I, I really like the idea of, Look, for years, very similar to Hollywood Brown, Jerry Judy was one of my favorite players I've scouted when I was looking at him before this season, going like, man, I can't wait for this guy to be in the NFL. Well, now I've got him on my fake team here. All right. Uh, by the way, Marlon Mack went a couple picks later. It's interesting when Jonathan Taylor, 409, Marlon Mack, 809. You also had uh, John Brown in the eighth round. Carrion Johnson finally went in the ninth round. J.K. Dobbins at 905. Jason is back on the clock, and regrettably, the, com Alexander. the computer couldn't hear us, and yeah. Alexander Madison's still there. My name is Alexander Madison. Now, do you feel just fine with the gamble on Dalvin Cook and then spending the second pick kind of as part of that gamble here in the ninth round? I mean, yes, other, I, other players you could have taken. I'd be very happy if, with that. Latavius I, Murray. I mean, that's the thing is when I'm looking at other running backs here, uh, you're taking a shot on anyone and the probability that they hit is very low statistically speaking when you're drafting outside of the top 36 running backs so um i would much rather guarantee dalvin cook and have the minnesota backfield locked up if i knew that i could get alexander madison in the ninth round i would take dalvin cook probably pick four yeah uh, because it, of the insurance it, if you remember the when, when we played this game with zeke and tony pollard you had to take pollard in like the sixth sometimes Which the fifth round that might will happen probably as happen we get close to the season <laughs> and, it, and it could but it, it at least worked out yeah all right this is an easy pick for me and i i i was staring down drew Brees. i knew if i passed on him jason may very well take drew Brees with his pick what i was hoping for was to take drew Brees, and then coming back in the back part of the ninth round i would take his counterpart at tight end Jared Cook, my number five overall tight end. I'll get the Drew Brees, Jared Cook stack with the eighth and ninth round picks. I'm quite happy with how this is coming together for my roster. Uh, CeeDee Lamb went next, Zach Moss, and then Mike's on the clock. What are your thoughts on the Jared Cook pick uh, in the ninth round? We hadn't seen a tight end go off the board since Darren Waller in the sixth. I don't remember what show it was, but... Where You've I, really cooled on Cook. I'm just not... I'm not in on Jared Cook of him. He could repeat. He's just the guy. But I'm you would have taken Evan Ingram there over Jared oh, Cook. Oh, yes, 100%. You and may take Ingram right here. I, I might, but I have a, another player that I like more than Evan Ingram. I'm, you go with Blake Jarwin? <laughs> no. I, unfortunately, a tight end dropped to me that I have to take, so I can't just wait and take only Blake Jarwin. Uh, what round are we in? Is this 10 or 11? This is your ninth, uh, the end of the ninth round, first pick of the 10th round. Okay, so at this point, I'm taking the chance. I'm taking the experiment, the Tyler Higby experiment. If what we saw at the end of the season comes true and is what they do the majority of the time, Higby is going to be an absolute slam dunk. He could turn into waiver fodder. But at this point of the draft, I just don't There's care. no one with more upside, including Evan no, there, Ingram. Including Evan Ingram has more upside. I Historically don't speaking, he, in his hot games, he was doing just what Tyler Higby was doing. I was actually going to ask the question. I know it's not one we entertain very often, but if you're taking the lottery ticket at tight end, is there any chance you go Higby Ingram here with your tenth round pick? Hmm. I know you. I mean, hmm. We we would never really normally end up in a situation with two tight right. ends on the roster. I was just asking the question because I know you like the potential of both. Yeah, I I do love Ingram. Well, because my. My stance on Evan Ingram is if he's healthy, he's awesome. Uh, I do have a bit of a Golden Tate situation, and uh, I don't know if I want to go into those waters with you Look guys. Look at you looking at your roster. <laughs> so um, there is, there's a running back on the board that I really want to take, even though I think my team need – I need wide receivers to balance, but I can't pass up on the value of this just in case we are – uh, overestimating how much the 49ers love Raheem Mostert. I'm going to take Tevin Coleman. All right, so Tevin Coleman in the 10th round, first pick of the 10th round. Surprisingly, one of your favorite sleepers, Antonio Gibson, went next. Mm, I was. I could say this. Do you feel some regret? Wouldn't could, you rather have him on your team? I could say this for sure because I, I was already looking. I expected Gibson to be able to come to my next pick, and there was no chance he was getting back to you, Mike. None, because Gibson was my pick. My, 
Mike's, yes, he's Mike's so face is the face of a man who has Tevin Coleman instead of Antonio Gibson oh. on his roster. Oh, he's so sad. Tevin I'm not happy. Coleman. Oh, man. You know, it's great when you can love someone and still be so happy for their sadness. Yeah. I love you, Mike, but yeah, did, uh, <sighs> your sadness brings me great, great joy. That's what me and Hollywood think about you, Jay. Oh, I don't like you, though. <laughs> so wait, so who got him? Computer? Computer. Computer got him. Team 11. Oh, man. Hunter Henry went next. Hunter Henry could uh, yeah. could be just uh, ordinary, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm back on the clock. I'm really uh, looking at wide receiver at this point, and uh, I think I'm going to do what Mike did, which is kind of you're at this point in the draft where you're not looking at just you know where your projections necessarily perfectly rank somebody. You're you're trying to take a shot on a player that you like, and there are a couple of players that are in that category for me. Uh, I'm going to take Deshaun Jackson. I'm going to take the no! shot on. <laughs> what is happening? Mike's entire draft, the draft is, is unraveling. Falling apart. <laughs> I'm taking Deshaun Jackson in the 10th round. It's great when the 10th round picks can make you unravel. Like, it's spectacular. <laughs> Mike had been picturing Antonio Gibson, Deshaun Jackson, filling it up. And here we go. Deshaun Jackson joins my roster. Daryl Henderson goes next. Jason takes Evan Ingram. I take him super quick because that's if I, that's who Evan I Evan Ingram. There is ridiculous. Yeah, tenth round pick. That's who I expected you to take, Mike. I totally understand the logic for going Hig Beast. I probably would have taken whoever was left over. But Did I'm you happy. call him Hig Beast? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what he was at the very end of the year. <laughs> that, that he is, was. Yes. So I looked this up while you were talking because it's always just so fun. Those last five games, he was on. He was on pace for 1,670 yards on 138 receptions at tight end Higbeast. Um, all right, so now I'm at the point where – That's – what is that? Michael's secret sauce or whatever from Space Jam? That's what Tyler Higby <laughs> – um, Special yeah. stuff, Michael's special stuff. This is where you go off of your – ordered rankings so you pick the players that you love do you want to fill in who was real quick here, Andy? real quick you took ingram uh gronkowski was the one i wanted to bring up he ended up going a few picks later you didn't go gronk you went ingram austin hooper big time tight end last year also went right after gronkowski and then uh another highlight worth mentioning anthony mcfarland you're in backup running back range tony pollard boston scott you're back on the clock i'm back on the clock and this is where i'm going to look for um, still need a quarterback, still need a defense before these last three. Usually picks. I'm going to look off the rankings and, and find my highest upside guy. Um, someone that's a deep sleeper swing for the fences. That being said, I'm going to draft a player here that I have not drafted in as long as I can remember. He was always cost way too much. And I don't even really love him going forward, but this pick will make Al Borland happy. I am taking Jordan Love's backup, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> here because look at this point in the draft i'm going to take the shot that maybe he is this you know the he actually is the starter <laughs> right i'm gonna take the guess that he is actually the starter but you know with Devonte adams back and another year under this system maybe he gets back to throwing 35 touchdowns so i in the 11th round i'm happy to do it all right aaron Rodgers, your quarterback in the 11th round my how times have changed robbie anderson went next I'm on the clock. I just took Deshaun Jackson. I don't know if you knew that, Mike. But my next, I heard. Pick, my next pick is going to surprise you, but it is contextual, and it's Damian Harris. I'm taking Damian Harris mm, with the right. 11th, with the ninth pick of the 11th round. Sony Michelle, the fragile Sony Michelle. I want to see what happens. Interesting. And uh, I'm willing to kind of gamble with what could be a pretty good team with Cam Newton. And making sure that I have uh, that backfield locked up. Chase Edmonds went next. Matthew Stafford and Mike, you have your two of your last three picks right now. All right. So one of these picks is going to be a really boring, but we're we're at the point of the draft where it's value. Jamison Crowder is going to see a lot of targets. I don't know if he can turn that into sustained fantasy you value. You managed to put Golden Tate and Jamison Crowder I did on it. the same roster. I did it. But I'm only counting them. I'm not combining stats for you. You don't need to. They're going to be really okay. <laughs> All right. And then for my last pick, I got to just – I got to fly. I got to soar. Now, does this make you take a defense? You need to take one. Okay. Well, I still have a bench spot to fill. Oh, all right. So yeah. I can still try – 
to become airborne and soar like an eagle. And I just I don't know where to go because that's used. I'm usually at this point of the draft. I am I've in it's the Antonio atmos- Gibson. Yeah, I'm 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 at Antonio Gibson's back. And we are best friends, and we are looking at clouds, just enjoying a, a nice day. But I can't do that in this draft. All right, I will take the shot. Oh, my goodness. All right. Cam Newton, I need you to do something, buddy. Oh, I'm taking you. Nikhil Harry? I'm going to take Nikhil Harry, who could turn into Cam Newton's number one. I mean, probably not with, with, with uh, Edelman still there, but first-round talent, first-round ability. Can he get it back on track? Okay. All right. I don't mind that pick. He was somebody I was thinking about. Uh, with my last positional uh, selection here before a defense, I'm going to go with Jalen Rake. No! Come on, man! That's I, lo- so I-, I love every every player that I've ended up with here, but I'm taking Jalen ah, Rager, which almost nigga. feels like some sort of like uh, insurance policy on Deshaun Jackson, but it I just be. don't know how things are going to shake out. Rager with my last position. Now I've got to find a pick. Well, that is how the draft works. That's not fair. You should always get whoever you want the most. Do you want me to r- <laughs> run off some of my favorites? Yeah, please. Yes, Mike. Illuminate. Uh, okay. You got Jarek McKinnon, obviously. Uh, uh, Chris Thompson, mm-hmm. I think, is interesting for Jacksonville. Uh, I Depending on how you feel, but Justin Jackson for the Chargers. I can't tell if Mike's giving real ones or fake ones. No, I'm ones. giving... I'm they, giving sound, they sound real. I, I was going to get fake ones. ones. Kiki QT still available, Jason? What? Dante Pettis. I mean, oh. Well, not, but not Dante Pettis, but you could get... Brandon Ayukin. You could. He could be the number one on that team for a little bit. Uh, Probably not. Sammy though. Watkins is available. I honestly um, thought about That's taking Sammy pick. Watkins. I, yeah, this is gross. Okay, so um, if this is. Cold, if this is where we are. And <laughs> it's where we are. I'll be honest with you. I don't really like any of these options, any more than the rest. I was so positive I was getting Jalen Rager. I was going to double up with Judy and Rager. I think those two guys have a chance to week one just really show they are exceptionally talented and they are involved in the team, and if not, you move on. So I'm going to actually draft the New England Patriots. It's one pick ahead of where I would usually do it. I'm a last-round guy, but I actually do see a difference between their defense and some of the others, so I might as well grab them first. And by doing so, you extended the show to one more positional pick for your team. So go ahead and close it out with the last dart throw on your roster before I read out our teams. In fact, I will begin by just reading off my final team, as you think, Jason. I've got Drew Brees at quarterback. My running backs are Josh Jacobs, Kenyon Drake, David Montgomery, Sony Michelle, and Damian Harris. My wide receivers, Cooper Cup and Robert Woods, that interesting combo. Hollywood Brown, Deshaun Jackson, and Jalen Rager. My tight end is Jared Cook, and that is my roster. Now, Mike, you want to read yours off? So I have my number three quarterback, Kyler Murray, who uh, if anyone's a dark horse to sneak into the number one spot, I would put those chips on Kyler Murray. Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler, Mark Ingram, Ronald Jones. Ingram was a steal for you. Tevin Coleman, yeah, I was very happy with that. Those are my running backs. And then wide receiver, DJ Moore, DJ Chark. Uh, and then I got Golden Tate, Nikhil Harry, and Jamison Crowder, and the Higbeast. Tyler Higby is my tight end. And I ended up going with Chris Thompson. If we believe what we believe about Leonard Fournette and the passing work going away. I like away. it. So my running backs are Dalvin Cook, Miles Sanders, David Johnson, Kareem Hunt, Alexander Madison, and Chris Thompson at wide receiver. I have Amari Cooper, Terry McLaurin, Michael Gallup, Jerry Judy, and I have... Aaron Rodgers and Evan Ingram in my onesie positions. All right. With the Patriots. That was pretty interesting. That was fun. It's always a different uh, hig beast, so to speak, to go one team for each of us. It's a little bit harder to get through everything on the show, a little bit less time to think, but I think it was uh, it was pretty interesting. Kyler Murray in the fifth surprised me. Ending up with Mark Ingram in the sixth, Mike, it was a steal. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, those picks back to back, but Ronald Jones in the seventh round. Not a bad draft. Not a bad draft. Tevin Coleman. I assume we'll have a poll, right? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, we've on, we've done that every time we've ever done a, a mock draft. I'm course. letting the people know. We yeah. have new listeners. At the FF Ballers on Twitter. Contribute your vote. Vote for me. Yeah, and your name is Jason. <laughs> exactly. All right. 
That does it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for tuning in, supporting. Head to footclanvote.com if you want to help us out, nominate the fantasy footballers for people's choice, best sports. And spitballers for comedy. There you go. Thanks, See everybody. you soon. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And a reminder, WGU has created an online university for people whose ambition never rests. WGU's competency-based learning model was designed specifically to fit into the lives of busy adults. WGU offers online bachelor's and master's degrees in business, IT, education, and nursing. Get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash fantasyfootballers. That's wgu.edu slash fantasyfootballers.